who don't, don't know, know me. me. Welcome to another episode of Let's Rewatch, the show where we like to watch movies that we enjoyed in our youth and see if they're still any good. I'm Nick. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Nick. <laughs> I'm not restarting. You got to go with it. That was the best <laughs> And that's out. Nick. I'm Sam. Wait, I'm... <laughs> that's, that's Brett. And there's Ash. And, and I'm a man in this. And Ginger and Marianne. Are you just doing all of the intro? <laughs> I thought I'd expedite the process and keep me from interrupting you by just having me do it. All right. Well, thank you. No, I think you literally just continued interrupting. Is what you did. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I coughed during your intro, Nick. So I've got a little <laughs> trivia question for you guys. You remember the kid from Phantom Menace, Jake Lloyd? What other movie has he been in? Wait, wait, which Anakin though? The little the one? little kid the in kid. Phantom Menace played Anakin. There's only one kid. Well, the other guy kind of acted like a baby. So, <laughs> I what other movies has he been in? I thought I I just heard that he was like hated by all and retired from acting. Is that true? Well, he probably retired, but he was also in the Christmas classic Jingle All the Way. Oh! Oh! Which we'll be watching this time around for Let's Rewatch. Ah! It's so definitely a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was, so I'm the one who's never seen this movie. This is Jingle All the Way from 1996 and was looking up and pleasantly surprised to see that it's got a long list of really great actors in this movie. Yes, indeed. Yes. So that that gets me pretty excited. So clearly we're dealing with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I remember when we watched The Substitute, Ash was really disappointed it wasn't a Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah. Here you go. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What's in this box? It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <It's freaking laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Nice. Get to the Christmas tree. <laughs> Get to the stocking. <laughs> and I guess our other main star looks to be Sinbad. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to summarize Sinbad, a stand up comedian who started doing some TV, who started doing some movies. Did he die? Is Because I haven't no. seen him since this movie. No. I don't think he's. What dead. did he do after this movie? Um, <laughs> like anything at all? Wait, Sinbad as in Shaquille O'Neal? No. No, two, no two Sinbad. Sinbad. The human. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, I was gonna say uh, I was gonna say he's back in the recording studio, but that was Shaquille O'Neal. Sorry. Wait, Shaquille O'Neal's in. A, we're doing a. He's doing another album. He had a first one. <laughs> yes. It looks like at this point this is Sinbad one. is mostly doing voice work for cartoons. Um, he, he was actually on an episode of Comedy Bang Bang last year, but he hasn't done a lot of movies in a while. But is he's still Sinbad around. the one from Shazam? No, that would be Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> wow. Ash. Do, do you need a, an extra shovel in there? I don't think I know the difference between those two, apparently. No, you don't need an extra shovel. You're doing just fine. I'm not talking about I, anyway. I think you just don't know who Sinbad is. Maybe. This is this is sounding like the case. So yeah, he was a stand-up comedian, and I think he kind of made his break in a different world that spin off from the Cosby show. Um, and then transition into movies. And I think he did a lot of like kitty type movies. Wait, he was he in the Cosby show? He actually was in one episode of the Cosby show as a completely different character. Oh. But then when they did the a different world, he was a new character. But yeah, I feel like Sinbad's mostly done like kid friendly type comedy stuff. Mm -hmm. He was in First Kid. <gasps> I remember that one. Okay. All right. Yes. So he we hasn't all... done anything in a really long time. You just he was in that. Good Burger. What? Yeah, it looks like he's done a lot of voice work lately. Wait, was it, Good Burger wasn't after this, was it? This was Good Burger. This was after Good Burger. No. What? Jingle All the Way and First Kid were ninety six, and the Good Burger was ninety seven. Wow, that's weird. We haven't really seen him since ninety seven. Like, there's stuff on his list, but 
not stuff I would have watched. <laughs> this is a terrible cover for. He was in a movie called Stompin', and this is the cover for it. It's just his big dopey smiling face, and like I don't know what's happening in that picture. <laughs> is that guy shooting a bow and arrow? So we've also got Phil Hartman, and this would have been yeah. two years after he finished Saturday Night Live. Oh. Phil Hartman, the best. Yeah. Um, Rita Wilson, Martin Mull, Harvey Corman, Jim Belushi, Lorraine Newman. So lots of fun people, I think. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's stuff to be optimistic about here. Yeah, optimism. You, you, you look very happy about something, Brett. Oh, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be enjoyable. <laughs> And you were, like, super not into it before you did the research. So I'm, like, happy that you've got at least cast hopes. Yeah. And it it kind of seems to me like it would be just, like, cheesy family holiday goofiness. Um, but, of course, I haven't seen it. So It's got know. a line in it that you've probably heard before because I've shouted it a few times. Okay. <laughs> Volume <laughs> off, Bryce. <laughs> Windows I'm, is very needy with its notifications. I'm sorry. I'm going further down this Jake Lloyd hole, and it just gets oh even God. more depressing. You want to go down the Jake Lloyd hole. He, Jake Lloyd. Oh, this is not my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking into my cup. You people have a drinking problem. <laughs> okay, first of all, this. Whoa. Whoa. This is what he looks like in 2016. And second of all, he's been moved from jail to a psychiatric ward. Whoa. So he more than quit acting. Wow. He quit okay. life. Hold People on. really hated that movie. Kind of squint when you look at that picture and it kind of looks like Daleks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know Thanks where you Thanks for lives. bringing us down, Ash. Yeah, you're welcome. How are Merry you? So Christmas. We're about to watch the, the, uh, him as a, an adorable child in this movie. Yeah, so look for that. <laughs> we're, we're about to see the key moment where it all went wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger going... <laughs> And you can see his synapses breaking. So, okay, so who's bringing this to the table? This is your jam, isn't it, Sam? I think it's a combination of me and Ash, because we both That's really true. want to watch it for the podcast. Is but your... but Sam has been saying it the most. As you yes. try to pass it off, is that in case it's bad? I'm not, no, I'm not trying to pass it off. I wanted to share in the glory with you, but if All you right. don't want to share in the glory, that's fine. I'll okay. take it off. I love this movie, and it's so cheesy, and Nick, you're probably going to hate it, and I don't care. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Fair enough. It's hilarious, and just like makes me feel like a stupid little kid, and it's amazing. Okay. It just occurred to me, is this Schwarzenegger's first comedy? Oh, oh, no. No? Didn't he do... um, That was earlier. Kindergarten Cop? Oh, Kindergarten Cop, yeah. That was was before this? Yeah. This is my kind of Schwarzenegger movie. And I mean, it depends It depends on what you consider a comedy. Because I feel like... <laughs> is this his first movie that was intended to be a comedy? Yeah. Uh, no, the answer is Twins. Oh, yeah. Twins. With I, see, I feel like you'd have a hard time selling that as a comedy. Twins? I remember hating that movie, but... Well, just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not intended as a comedy. Yeah, then Kindergarten Cop. It was Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger were twins. What was... And then Junior was... Arnold when he gets was pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. I didn't like oh, that one. Man. And they keep talking about doing a third twins movie with a, or no, I'm sorry, a second twins movie, but there's a third twin. <laughs> and I'm going to get this Wouldn't wrong, but it's triplets. It might be Eddie Murphy they were talking about. No. Oh, oh, man. I wonder, is this listed on the IMDb's? Is that just so they can say a brother from another mother? It, is that is that like the most horrible horrible version of battleshipping right there? <laughs> like not understanding science. How does this work? Yeah. <laughs> so was this a Christmas tradition for you, Sam? Um, not an official one, but we have a Christmas tradition where we always have to watch a Christmas movie on Christmas Eve. And I know for a fact that this was a movie that we watched one year. And we can never repeat movies, so we'd always like rewatch the movies that we'd watched in the years before in the weeks leading up to Christmas. So, so it just snowballs, and then you've just got this giant list yeah, of movies. Yeah, with Sam's working. family, Christmas is a real big production. It's yep. that's the whole month. How have you like not run out of Christmas movies? Because they keep making them. Well, wow, that's true. There's a lot. 
they keep making them and then like well, there's ones that we hadn't seen so what are you expecting brett i'm i'm expecting this to be good there is uh, i think the whole plot line in this movie is something that's i remember being very very 90s uh in in spirit in christmas spirit in christmas spirit yes phil hartman is in it and he's i mean i guess he's not the main character by by a long shot but He's, you know, I love anything with Phil Hartman in it, and that is my statement. Does he fight Schwarzenegger? I don't remember. <laughs> that, that was a joke question, but I like that you're treating it as a possibility. I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> oh, nice. Or it might be vice versa. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. I, I vote yes. Okay. So, Ash, you're also very much into this, I think. Yes. I will accept... Uh, co-partnership with Sam. Um, I remember really loving this movie. I saw it, um, I mean, loving it in the sense that, like, it's not a masterpiece in cinematography, but it's a hilarious, you know, it's of that time of Schwarzenegger going to the funny side, I guess. <laughs> and uh, But I think it'll be funny. I don't remember a lot of it, but what I do remember is it being, an, it like, taking place in a mall. Oh, so it's like Dawn of the Dead. Uh, yeah, totally, but exactly. With toys and Christmas, okay. and less less zombies. Oh, I think I'm starting to remember what this might be about. Yeah, I don't want to say it. I do remember what it's but about. But then you're gonna say it anyway. Let's do it. No, I, I don't want to <laughs> say it in case nobody, because you haven't seen it, right? I have not seen it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll let you figure it out. All right. It's just, there's not a deep plot here. Don't worry. Yeah. No, but I, I think I'm remembering what it's supposed to be about. So what are you expecting, Bryce? Well, I loved Home Improvement as a kid, or, you know, uh, Tim Allen was great. So seeing him become Santa Claus, it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if it's good. We're going to rewatch Jingle All the Way. It's on your Google Play and iTunes rental services. So if you want to check it out, pause the podcast, watch Jingle All the Way, and join us when you're done. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Nailed it. <sighs> Failed it. <laughs> so we just rewatched Jingle All the Way, and clearly we have to address the elephant in the room that that movie stole a lot from Hook. <laughs> yeah, the dad did end up flying around well, at that's the true. end. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it does seem like the the dad doesn't have time for the kid is like the first reel of so many movies. Yeah. Yes. It's been kind of overused. It has been overused, but this movie was almost identical. <laughs> like it was so similar to Hook. Like, oh, like the way that whole s sequence played out? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, Christmas party going on, have to leave, office building, your yeah. assistant trying to help you, and then, like, mm -hmm. show up late scene, everyone's gone. I think if Sinbad was in Hook, we would have had <laughs> a, a much better Hook. You mean if Sinbad was Hook? <laughs> no, no, cause then that would have been... And Dustin Hoffman was the yeah. best part of Hook. Well, Maggie Smith was the best part of Hook. Yeah. So I, I want to read off a few names here. Ben Richards, John Kimball, Douglas Quaid, Howard Langdon. These are not names of people that Arnold Schwarzenegger should be playing. <laughs> like every time they pull one of those out, like really? That's Howard Langdon. Well, it's clear He's that this movie was like not written for him either because like that whole stick at the end where he's like, <laughs> Shtick. You're going to kill me with this. You're, I'm literally going to die. <laughs> what are you showing me? But the whole thing at the end, like, clearly doesn't work with somebody with an Austrian accent. Right. Yeah. yeah it's like, <laughs> as soon as he opens his mouth, it's like, oh, you've got the same outrageous accent as my dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jamie. Like, how many? It is Austrian? me, servo man. <laughs> How many Austrian 
Austrians have relocated to Central America or wherever. And, and we are not. In Central <laughs> <laughs> no, but they they're in like but Wisconsin they're in or something. Central America. I'm not saying Central either. America is a different place. Oh, it's yeah, I think you mean midway, Midwest. Yes, Midwest. but the central. central of, 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 I, I, I get yeah. what you're. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What What, what you said makes sense. With you people today. Generally, Central, central America, America means like Argentina and shit. But your point is okay. is accurate. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're making this movie, I can see you saying, oh, that'll be fun to see Arnold Schwarzenegger freak out and start fighting people in a mall. But the rest of the movie doesn't work. Like, why can't you just say, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, let's do a little bit of rewriting and say he's a transplant from Austria and he doesn't understand why Christmas is so outrageous here. And, you know, write that into the story. Don't just try to play it off like he's some dude in Wisconsin. But yeah. how does Turbo Man come into that story? I, I think that's still what all makes, like, he, yeah, he moved to America. He his started kids a family likes because he likes Turbo Man. Man. Okay. But don't just try to play it off like he's just some mattress salesman. <laughs> he's not clearly just some Midwestern mattress salesman. Uh. <laughs> Address it. Don't call him Howard Langston. <laughs> That bugs the hell out of me. That is not Howard Langston. I, I think it's wrong with funny him. that the name bothers you more than the fact that him being Austrian just breaks the whole movie. <laughs> it really does. Well, the, <laughs> him being Austrian doesn't break the movie with some really small rewrites. But the movie that we just saw. Yeah. As it soon as he starts talking and nobody recognizes who he is. Yeah. Dumb. Okay. I would like to propose a new reality TV show. In which Arnold Schwarzenegger goes around and talks to people through devices where they can't see who it is. And I want to know what percentage of people know it's Arnold. Well, did you see that, that thing? 100%. On, it was uh, James Corden and Shaq do a prank show. And it's like they try to set up a prank and people walk up and they're like, ridiculous premise. And the people are like, oh my God, wait, that's Shaq. And <laughs> like every time. They just can't pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to me like Mel Gibson did a lot of work to change his accent. And Schwarzenegger just said, fuck that. I have no interest in putting any work into sounding like the character I'm playing. <laughs> well, I, I think it's because he became like people went to see him. Yeah. Right. So. I guess it's like this doesn't matter because people are going to pay to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger anyway. It just seems like a bad casting decision. Ugh. It's like, I don't, it's just not great. But this, honestly, this movie wouldn't have been much of anything That's without true. him. Yeah. Maybe like the Phil Hartman stuff. I, I remember a lot more Phil Hartman in this than there actually was. Yeah, there wasn't that much. No. And yeah, that was my favorite part, but. Let's oh, talk well. about the good casting decision. <laughs> like this was Phil Hartman's movie. It really was. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Although the thing that bugged me the whole time was it it all I guess in the back of my mind I always thought that maybe they were really rushed when they made the Phantom Menace and they thought this kid would be good and didn't realize how bad he was actually going to be until they were too far into the movie. But no, it's clear that somebody watched Jingle all the way and said yes. That's the kid that we want for the Phantom Menace. And What's... that person was George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, he thought that was a good performance. I didn't think he was bad. I didn't think he was like uh, amazing, but he wasn't bad. Certainly not. <laughs> even like, even like the, I mean, okay, this is a high bar to set, but even the worst of the kid actors from Stranger Things, you know, like. Well, that's, I, I don't want to. You, you can't, can't compare say... him to Stranger Things kids. Those kids are. Why not? Are because you saying, I you think put, our standards of acting have gone way up. It's okay. I mean, like I don't think that that's a fair comparison for the time period. But every decade has like a quality kids thing, you know. There's mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not gonna be able to name one now. I'll name but, one: Haley Joel Osment in Forrest like, Gump. Oh, yeah, he knocked it out of the park. That's yeah, and it was probably a little bit after this one. I mean, I'm not saying he's great. I'm just saying I didn't think he was terrible. Or Haley Joel Osment in The Sixth, Sixth Sense. Sense. Yeah. yeah. But like, it, yeah, the first time Haley Joel Osment rolled up on screen, age seven, eight, I don't know. He was an awesome actor. I kind of, 
I I'd forgot that that was that wasn't Haley Joel Osment in this. Oh, you remember it being? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of only been nice as a kid. I was like, "There's only one kid actor." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. except I I thought that too, but I thought it was the kid from Big Daddy and the kid that plays Ross's son on Friends. I don't know what ever happened to that guy. I don't know those people. Know. It's like a. It's the. They look the same. They're like blonde little Aryan boys. Like there's no difference between them. <laughs> the perfect child. <laughs> little little Schwarzeneggers. I have a hard time phrasing this question without without it being just like Say I hate right. this thing. Frazzing. Frazzing. Sorry. Frazzing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the scene where he recites the entire commercial. There's there that's like a kid trope where they're like the media is in their mind. Like was that a thing when you were a kid? Like did you actually feel like the media was in your in your brain with I feel like it was a big thing in the 50s when having a TV was a big social status. So if you got products that were on TV, it was like a big deal. I don't know if that was the case. I do think I... there were very specific toys that got in my head. You know, like I got the original Game Boy for Christmas as a kid. And that's, yes. you know, that was significant. Had I not gotten the Game Boy that year, that would have been a problem. You know? My parents were poor, so I was lucky to get presents. Boom! <laughs> Dang. But like, wanting a thing I, versus, I never like... got the popular fancy, yeah. ex- no. Like, I didn't... I didn't, so I I can't say that I had that experience because I knew that I wasn't going to get it. (laughs) Like, so it was a little different for girls too. Maybe like in that era, like video games were a big deal, Mm -hmm. and like I was into girlier stuff then and didn't really appreciate video games until I played them with my brothers. See, I was into the boy stuff. And Christmas at my family side would be at my aunt's house Christmas Eve, or my mom's side would be at my aunt's house. And the guys, the I have three cousins that are all boys, and they would all get the cool presents, like rollerblades, or like, here's a bug collecting kit, or just like cool shit like that. And I would get, I kid you not, granny, granny nightgowns yeah. and jewelry that a 50-year-old woman would wear. Nice. And like bath salts. So like, I don't know. I, I just, I so think you could I, get fucked up. I just didn't get like, I think there was one year where I got like a, like a playhouse thing that was fun. But it's like, I didn't normally at Christmas, I got shitty gifts. Mm. Now I, I want to know though, like game games and toys and stuff like the reason this movie feels the most 90s to me is because Game Boy, like po- Pokemon, Furby, Beanie Babies. Uh, um, the big one. Nintendo 64! <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say like the real template for this movie, I think, is Tickle Me Elmo. Yeah, yeah Tickle like, Me Elmo. Legit- yeah, that was, yeah. That was yeah. one I was forgetting. And like maybe it's because I do, do not have kids or do not know anyone with with kids old enough. But like... I haven't even recognized on in the news cycle another like massive massive toy craze. No, so, like no. that was like a 90s thing. It was like a You're 90s not thing. watching Saturday morning cartoons and I'm not sure that even exists as a thing anymore. Yeah, but it was like in the that, news. That was the advertisement channel. Well, it was in the news after it became a thing through the the Saturday morning cartoon. But I think what commercial. Brett's saying is like it hasn't Yeah, like, like we haven't made had it to the news in like the Elmo thing two for decades. a long time. <laughs> Yeah, there it hasn't the been the PlayStation big one. thing when the f- new iteration of the PlayStation. Oh, yeah, the PS, the PS3 had, or, yeah, yeah. And people were like buying it and then well, you know, camping out. Online. Shit's about to get real with the NES Classic. That's going to be the one mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, for sure. So that that is going to be an issue. Yeah, but like, <laughs> is that marketed to us, the people who were the victims of toy craze fever? Yeah. From what I've been reading on Reddit, <laughs> a lot of people are. This is what I was going to get to play with with my kid. Oh. And that was. That's going to be a huge part of it. And I think that feeds into this hysteria. Dude. And the kid's going to be like, these graphics suck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play on my iPhone. Did yeah. I ever tell you the story of how we got our N64? Mm-mm. So it was Christmas Eve and my dad got a Christmas bonus and was like, oh, cool. I can get the kids one more gift. And he goes to Toys R Us and he's like, so here's how much I have. What should I buy for my kids? And the employee was like, dude, we were just cleaning out our stock room and somehow... 
we found this N64 back there that was never purchased. Like, you need to buy this for your kids. My dad was like, oh, I don't know. It's a little bit more than I had. I don't think they're really into this thing. Like, he's like, dude, no, you have to buy this. <laughs> this guy at Toys R Us is looking out for you. Yeah. yeah. And so he was like, no, you have to. My dad's like, okay, okay. And he felt bullied into buying the Nintendo 64. <laughs> and he got home and told my mom and she freaked out. She's like, oh my God, you got that for the kids. Like my brother's been on a waiting list for six months and doesn't have one. Like, oh my God, they're going to be so excited. That exact thing happened to me with the Nintendo Wii. I just like, I like was waiting at several stores. I'd get up early in the morning, try to get it. They would all sell out. And then one day I just happened to walk into Target and they have seven of them. What? And I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, we just found them in the back. We don't know where they came from. <laughs> and I was like, I should, I wish I had the money to buy all of these and raffle yeah. them off on eBay. I know. Yeah, that's, that's the... NES Classic this year. And the moral insanely. of the story is, thank God we don't work in retail at Christmas. I thought you were going to say, thank God we don't have kids. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. But, you know, I think I think online shopping is what diffused yes. the craze. Yeah. Because if you want something and, like, you're Better. really that crazy about it, you can probably find it online. Which yeah. is insane, like... Amazon doesn't even know how many or when they'll get the NES Classic. Oh, really? It's like completely short circuit. It crashed Amazon's site that day. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, Nintendo, get your shit together. <laughs> they don't. They didn't even take pre-orders for it. Yeah. Like they could have, and then they would have known how many to make. Yeah. See, this is a marketing ploy. They want it to be in high demand to create more of a buzz so they can sell more. Yeah, I mean, if they made the right amount, then it wouldn't be a hot item to try to find. Because everyone would have spent money on it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there is some truth to that. There is. A little like, bit. Th there's a fine line. Like if it's too hard to get, you won't buy it. But if it's too readily available and too much over that price point, then you're gonna be like, eh. it's that what the Elvis thing, right? It creates scarcity. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't know Elvis. how that ties into Elvis. Yeah. Though. Oh, I don't, just so long if, train of thought. If Elvis, Elvis dies, manager, he's more in demand. <laughs> Elvis's manager did uh, booked very few shows mm. so that they would always sell out and no one could get in, and so that every show they did book sold out. Interesting. Interesting. Jinx. So yeah, I'm on I'm on board with Schwarzenegger punching a deer. Oh and the Santas. So is the, the moral Santas. of the story that you should just punch everything that gets in your way? Because it's kind of sure. what he does through the whole movie. I think the moral of the story is is if you fuck up enough but you're a dude, everything will work out okay for you. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I mean literally how much T tell shit Jake Lloyd. <laughs> How much shit does he get into? Like, so there was a real jet pack in this movie? Yeah. Because yeah. there was a parade. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Naturally. They needed the jet pack for the parade. Yeah, they just called it. So they invented Gino. it. <laughs> yeah, they the invented it. Yeah. And apparently killed a man. with Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. He was brain dead and now is not. Well, he was showing signs of brain activity, so that's a good sign. <laughs> And then, like, that whole scene, like, it just, it really accelerated from, like, hmm, I don't think that's likely to just, like, w like, Bugs Bunny. Like, he hits a brick wall, and his he just sort of, like, vibrates there for yeah. a minute and then falls on the concrete. That was weird. Yeah, you really lost me there. But the but the future is, like, it's there. The jetpack future. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Turbo Man. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Forget yeah, that Does anybody notice that we just created here? Or those like the disc gun or like basically everything about Turbo Man. The boomerang that actually works with like fucking GPS targeting or whatever. Or the way that uh, the Brainiac or whatever his name is, how his hand flew off and put back. <laughs> yeah, the magnetic retracting yeah, flying hand. I really, hand really enjoyed that. Because <laughs> if you're not paying attention, you don't really get what happened. But he literally ejected his own hand yeah. and punched Schwarzenegger, flew back onto his wrist, and then he wiggled his fingers. Yes, yeah. the wiggling of the fingers was such a great touch. It's like, what? <laughs> 
so good. <sighs> and is Sinbad just like mentally insane throughout this whole movie? Obviously. You know, to a, a much lesser extent, I think it's that phenomenon that we're talking about. He's just playing Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing the Sinbad routine. The Sinbad trope. It was it was a very, very tropey movie. Like they made him a postal worker. Yeah. You know, that was not a trope. Because that was a 90s, a another 90s thing. The, he, even, he even referenced it. He's yeah. like, that's right. I'm a postal worker. So, so you know. know. <laughs> yeah. He's, I will say, though, I did enjoy the fact that he was a postal worker just because he could like just constantly pull out boxes and claim he had a bomb. <laughs> I, I that was fun, but I thought what was a little bit more fun is when he was chasing Schwarzenegger down the street, and he just He's starts dumping the, boxes yeah. out of his bag to lighten himself up. I love that. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that was fantastic. And he threw one at him too. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. And I think it, in the beginning he like trips him with his bag as well. Oh, yeah, just like hits him square in the chest and knocks mm-hmm. him down. What if he doesn't even really have a son? Like, we never see his actual son. <laughs> what if he's just... He's just a collector. <laughs> he just, or his uh, alter ego. NRFB. Oh, man. NRFB. Never removed from box. Oh. Oh. Which, which kind of bugged me. There were a few times where they had the thing, but it was not in the box. And how are you going to give that to the kid? You know, that's going to be weird that it's not in the box. I don't think the kid cares. No, I don't think so. I've gotten toys that weren't in the box. Yeah. My parents used to do that a lot. They would, like, take Take it out out of of the the box box. and, like, put it in a different one so that I wouldn't know what it was, you know? (laughs) They were playing head games. Yeah. (laughs) It's like my my parents and putting, stuffing clothes in a, what was that? It was like a. Oh, Brett's parents do the best thing every (laughs) Christmas. It's so good. So, it was like some shit like a PS3 box filled with yes. clothes. Oh yep. no, it was, no, no, it was a DVD player box. Oh, yeah. oh no, it was like a Blu-ray player. It was yeah. a Blu-ray player was like, box. Oh, nice. And then it was closed. <laughs> but, then, but then they took a box for Costco garbage bags and filled it with a bar kit. So Brett was like, garbage bags? Cool, a bar kit. It's like, it's like a gift within a gift. It's so good. That is reversals. Oh my god. <laughs> that is not as good as what you did to that one kid once. Will you please tell what the story? Uh, that time you punched that kid? Yeah. So one time when I was a kid, I thought it would be funny uh for a friend's birthday to find the biggest box I could. Uh and so I found that box and then I proceeded to find a bunch of sequentially smaller boxes. Matroshka. <laughs> yeah, yeah Matroshka gift. Uh <laughs> So there's probably like, I don't know, like eight boxes or something. And you know, it's like the biggest gift there. And when he finally got to the last box, it was empty. And I was like, oh, sorry, I forgot to put that in there. And it was, in, it was like a thing in my pocket. <laughs> Which I found hilarious, but he did not appreciate it so much. Were you just like, psych, there's nothing in any of them. You know, having just moved and dealing with all of the empty cardboard boxes, like, fuck you. <laughs> like, now they're burdened by all these empty cardboard all boxes. These boxes. Did you wrap each one individually? I can't remember. The I, outer, the I outer hope box so. was definitely wrapped, but there was, there was at least a bunch of boxes. There was at least <laughs> tape. Now, how big of a box are we talking? Like, refrigerator box? No, I mean, no. it was like... You know, like, like, That's a, great like a radio. Stove. Show the great pod- radio. podcast with your hands. Like three feet by three feet. Okay. Like okay. Mid-sized, decent box. For a kid that's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. You know. I was like 10. I lo- and your parents let you do that? I guess so. I mean, that's <laughs> a good joke. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> anyone stopping me. I don't me. remember. We're trying. I remember oh. there's this one girl, I think her name was Bailey, and she went down in infamy at my school because she gave the best white elephant gift, and it was just a potato. What? Like <laughs> a wrapped potato. But for some reason, everyone wanted this potato. What? I don't know. And everyone was like, did what you- school did you go to? Amish school? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty kind much. Of. No, it was hilarious and really weird. Are you like sure people. it wasn't one of the life stones from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? I am positive it was a potato. <laughs> that is weird. But that was on Shark Tank. People like potatoes, man. That's right. Yeah. Totally. Somebody invented the potato. Somebody sure. has a fucking... Mail a potato with a message written on it in Sharpie business. Yes. That, and they make millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. You can order someone a mail order potato. Potato gram. 
Well, now I know what I'm getting rich for Christmas. <laughs> well, we already got him a coconut. Yeah, from we did. Hawaii, so Co- oh, a coconut with that. It. Spoiler alert! Does Rich, rich listen to the show? Our only listener. He, he, we got it for him last year. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, now he can look forward to a potato. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I remembered a lot more, like antics of running through the mall in different stores yeah. and stuff like that that just wasn't in the movie. In fact, I didn't remember the end at all. <laughs> oh, I remember. I forgot how cheesy the effects were, but I remember the whole like, battle. Wow. Yeah, I don't. Uh, literally, the only thing I remembered was them like jumping over like the boxes and other people in the beginning. But I, I don't know. I definitely thought in the intro, they're going to get Schwarzenegger in that suit. Like, <laughs> oh. As soon as I saw that suit. Yeah, they're going to get him in there. Well, you have a suit just like it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it's just like it. <laughs> So, different. so uh when i when i was a kid and this movie came out i do not remember asking for this but i got that toy for for some it exists it's, it's, it's a, a real, real thing. toy and it was kind of a piece of shit toy it looked like a piece of shit in <laughs> yeah, the movie. it looked like garbage but uh it was one of those ones where instead of when the battery runs out the thing stops working it slowly got Deeper, uh, and so you press it. Like, it's turbo time. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean it was like playing a tape? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know how that. How else would that affect the speed? I don't know. Yeah, can we eBay that? I don't, it might be in that box in the garage. Honestly, I don't. I don't what? Remember. Yeah, there might be a Turbo you Man. You can't throw away Turbo Man. <laughs> <laughs> We've tried. <laughs> <laughs> it just flies back. Did you find it? How much is it? Not only did I find it. But the price for it is exactly what the fake Santas charge Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh my what? god! It is two ninety nine. Wow. Which is that weird? Like, it's weird to just oh, I just happen to have three hundred dollars in my wallet. Not if you're Arnold. He's a really Business good master salesman. Pieces, I don't know. I yeah. He's their number one customer. Salesman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, maybe it's like the credit card. The society we're in now, but I can't imagine walking around with $300 in my wallet. No, I don't like having any cash. Yeah. Well, that that was like another thing that was different. You could see that was different in the times is like this movie would not have happened if they had cell phones. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of these issues could have been avoided with a cell phone. Mm-hmm. And like just from the beginning, if he had ways, he would have known there was a cop there. <laughs> Yeah. And he wouldn't have played split. Great. God, this yeah, this thing looks like a piece yeah. of shit. And I would bet you that most of these on eBay people buy, give to somebody as a gift for Christmas as a gag, then next year sell on eBay and somebody else gives it as a gift for Christmas <laughs> as a gag. It's like the fucking eBay chain letter. It's gotta be. Like it's like candy corn. They never make new candy corn. Yeah, they only made a couple dozen of these. <laughs> they just keep reselling. Like, what other purpose would there be to buy Turbo Man on eBay? Is that He-Man? Yeah, I guess if you scroll down far enough. But, like, that is such an abstract joke. Like, you have to really <laughs> like this movie. Because if you had given me a Turbo Man doll before we watched it today... I'm like, what the fuck? I would, yeah, I would have been like, what? Yeah. You'd have to be some weird diseased human to be a fan of jingle all the way (laughs) i stand by this movie yeah it's not a cinematic masterpiece is it a good movie probably not but was it fucking enjoyable and did it embody the christmas spirit hell fucking yes and we all laughed i i it's the christmas spirit to punch people because it's got a little bit of arnold flair (laughs) I did enjoy the path you just walked us down. Like, is this a cinematic masterpiece? No. <laughs> is this a good movie? No. <laughs> did people like it? No. <laughs> hey, is there something to be enjoyed in this movie? No. <laughs> I said, yes, there is okay. something to be enjoyed in this movie. <laughs> and I enjoyed it with all of you. That's. I think that's kind of my review of it, too, is like <laughs> there's – much less of what I thought was enjoyable in this movie than yeah. I remember. And the scenes that I remember being the whole movie was them playing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year over the the 
lottery ball thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, mm, these cookies, and like, put the cookie <laughs> down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, basically all the Phil Hartman. And I don't remember most of the other stuff from when I was watching it as a, as a younger kid. Um, and I really liked those parts. And the rest of the movie was kind of kind of missed the enjoyment threshold, I think. So let's. Uh, how, what do you think of this game? Can we agree that this might be the one situation where not having Arnold would have made the movie better? You know what? <gasps> I actually agree with Brett where it probably wouldn't have been better. Yeah, who yeah. would you replace Arnold with? That's the game I want to play. I'm going to say Tim Allen. All right. Although maybe yeah. that's a little on the nose because he did the other Christmas movie. But I could see Tim Allen in that role and it being a better movie. And he'd get to Hanks. take his shirt off again. And then he, if, if it was Tom Hanks, it would have been with his actual real life wife. Is that his wife? That's his wife, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Which is weird. I'm watching the whole movie thinking like their conversations when she gets home from shooting. It's like Tom Hanks asking her, how is it being Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife? <laughs> Guys, Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. I could get on board with that. But I couldn't see Robin Williams punching people. That's the thing. Like, I do want drop, put the cookie down, and I want to have him punch a reindeer. (laughs) And and I don't know that Tim Allen could pull that off. Is your fan re-edit? Nick Offerman. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah, I knew if he existed back then. <laughs> put he, that well, cookie he down. <laughs> oh, my God. Son, put the cookie hey, down. it's been 10 years. We Time can make a remake. a remake. Nick Offerman, I know you're one of our listeners. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Side note, he just had, and we totally missed it, he had a wood fair and it was free admission, and you could oh, show wow. up and like. And it was here. It was in L. A. What? God damn yeah, it. I, I was gonna to bring it up, out. and then the and it you. Why did you not text us? Because I forgot. Because weed is legal now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've got Nick Offerman, you gotta have Megan Mullally in there as well. Oh my she god, she would be yes. an amazing wife. That would be great. the mom. No, and she should be the other person trying to get the fucking toy. <laughs> yeah. Can we make this movie? That or, would be good. Or the angry cop. Yeah, that would be, be good a too. great angry cop. And then they just make out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like more her being the uh, the the Sinbad character. Yes, because yeah. she's fucking. She can be fucking yeah. crazy great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like Guys, do I win with Nick Offerman? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, that yeah. Was- <laughs> See, I was thinking. Time period relevant, but yeah, I think you're. But then, a who's choice. the kid? Oh, we just get well, rid of the kid. You'd have to find <laughs> some kid. <laughs> Brett. Hey, or, no, oh, Nick Offerman go. just really wants the Turbo Man doll for himself, and the movie still works. Or the kid is Adam Scott at at, oh his, at his age God. right now. He's like the nerdy kid that never moved out. Yes. that wants it as a collectible. Oh, oh my God, this so is so good. good. And Will Ferrell is the angry cop. I can see that. <laughs> Yeah. I still want Phil Hartman though. Aww. Aww. Yeah. We all do. So I think that's your your review, Sam, right? That's that's how you're feeling. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Was it a good movie? No. Would I watch it again? Fuck no. yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, every year. Would I recommend it to other people? No. <laughs> yes, I would. I would I would redo this podcast all over again. Can we can we get though for this remake we're doing, can we get Freddie Wong to direct it so that there's like more guns and explosions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like it becomes ninety percent the Turbo Man sequence. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then just ten minutes of in between. Oh my god, Nick Offerman in the Turbo Man outfit. <laughs> <laughs> It's just all of it's better. Yeah. yeah. Why is there no Nick Offerman superhero movie? Well, there's some that girl who drew him as Iron Man. <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving Brett. What was your opinion on the movie? Um, <laughs> so aside f- from a couple of like just scary moments in retrospect, like the uh, it was supposed to be crazy that they trampled over the employee yeah. running into the store. And then you're like, Oh wait, but that happened and someone died. Yeah. And yeah. like, but at the time it was just like, Oh yeah, this is crazy. Black Friday's or Christmas is, is crazy and shopping is, you know, whatever, but like nobody's going to actually be that dangerous. Yeah. Nobody like really talks about the stark reality of the cartoon violence that we see here. Yeah. And so, Aside from a couple of those moments uh, and the mail bomb, <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think this movie is worth watching for the Phil Hartman of it 
but it's not worth watching for any other reason. <laughs> yeah, this movie, it really has heart, man. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you think, Ash? Um, yeah, I'm kind of lukewarm on this movie, I guess. It's like, it's not as funny as I remember it, but there were things about it that I didn't remember that I found enjoyable. Like the whole, like santa's sweatshop thing i did not remember (laughs) at all and that was great um i don't know i think it was enjoyable i would definitely watch it again i didn't think it was like the best movie ever but there's a lot of horrible christmas movies and i would put this before those any day yeah i would imagine jingle all the way too is probably pretty bad oh geez can we not can we not (sighs) even Please. I still want to see the substitute. Oh, oh, you too. mean Jingle All the Way too? The movie we're gonna make, of course. I mean, that's gonna be no, no. Fantastic. That's Jingle All the Way: The Next Generation. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So, what do you think, Bryce? It was all right. <laughs> Dramatic pause. So, thanks for joining us for a Christmas special. Let's rewatch. If you like the show, this is part of the Last Dash TV network of content. It's this show. And a YouTube channel, Last Dash TV, that has a drinking show and video game parodies and a cooking show and other. Not much uh, Sinbad, though. Thank Not you. enough Sinbad. Not enough Sinbad. But uh, yeah, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our videos on YouTube. And you can find us there where youtube.com slash laughstash TV. You can follow us on Twitter. We're at laughstash TV on Twitter. And you can follow this podcast at Let's Rewatch on Twitter. And if you follow us on Twitter, you can do fun things like guess the movie because I'll usually tweet a picture of the movie we're watching. So just like Brandon and Kenny, who guessed Jingle All the Way for this episode. Good job, guys. Nailed it. And um and you can also tweet at us movie suggestions. Please let us know. We um Sam has finally organized our movie suggestions into mm-hmm. a beautiful list. So hopefully we'll be more organized for next year. But do send us your movie suggestions. We'd love to do more of those. And you can also send them to um let's rewatch at gmail.com if you want to get in to- uh contact with us. Uh, that way. And if you liked our podcast, please give us a review on iTunes or Google Play Music. We really appreciate all of your feedback, whether it be positive or constructive. We love you all. So thank you. And we're going to keep doing this every two weeks. So make sure your subscriptions are all up to date and check us out for the next Let's Rewatch. This is fucking stupid, guys. Um, and I've seen this. I know. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching uh, the Olsen twins' How the West Was Fun. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure I love that. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs>